This generation of PlayStation has kicked off in a major way. And when I say this generation, I mean the PlayStation 5 generation, if you can purchase one. But it kicked off in a major way because we got Demon's Souls, Godfall, I know a lot of people hate that game, but I love it, and Spider-Man Miles Morales. Now, this game originally came out in 2020, and here we are in 2022, I know, full two years later, and it's now coming out as of today, you can get it on PC. This game is kind of like an expansion to 2018's Marvel's Spider-Man, and follows up a year later from the last DLC of that game. With this being in many ways an interquel between Spider-Man and whatever the sequel Spider-Man 2 is going to be. Think of this as like the infamous Second Son, Second Light to infamous Second Son, as it's shorter than the main game, yet stands on its own with its own story to tell and placement in the story's timeline. The question here is, does Spider-Man's Miles Morales succeed on PC and the Steam Deck, or does it feel like a quick cash grab since they could have packed it in with the Marvel Spider-Man's remastered that were released earlier this year? Well, a lot of people complain about that, but we're going to find out in this video review. So let's go ahead and get into it. The game kicks off with both Spider-Men, Peter and Miles, battling Rhino, which ends in Peter getting hurt and knocked out, leaving Miles to face him alone, and in the process of the fight, Miles activates his Venom Strike abilities and subdues Rhino. From there, Peter informs Miles that he will be going to Europe with MJ for vacation and for work, and is leaving the city in Miles' hands to protect, and then gives Miles his very own official Spider-Man suit. Well, it looks kind of tacky, but hey, it's the thought that counts. From there, Miles vows to protect New York and becomes Spider-Man in Peter's absence. Okay, so that's as much as I want to talk about as far as the story because I've already reviewed this game previously and if you're going to pick this up, you're probably familiar with the story as it is. Now, the thing you guys are probably wanting to know is how does this run on the PC and how is it on Steam Deck? Let's go ahead and talk about the technical aspects here. Technically speaking, you're able to tinkle with a lot of things in this PC port. You get substantially improved lighting along with ray tracing and ray trace reflections off buildings and bodies of water and even higher frame rates in comparison to the PlayStation 5 version and PlayStation 4 version by a long shot. Graphical enhancements to everything in the game are present from characters to NPCs to environments and best of all is the massive jump in loading time to the point of being near non-existent. Existent. You can adjust the reflections, shadows, character detail, lighting, field of view, as well as utilize AMD FSR 2.1 or utilize NVIDIA DLSS depending on what type of graphics card your computer has and also depending on how powerful a rig you got, you can just run the game in max settings. You can run the game in 4K, 1440p or 1080p with a refresh rate from as low as 30 frames per second all the way up to over 120 frames at 144 frames max at the 4K resolution. Now, if you've got a monitor that can go up to 240 frames per second or 300 frames per second, then yeah, you're able to run it at that, but it'll be limited to about 1080p or 1440p, depending on what you have. What I absolutely love is the fact that the game works perfectly with ultra-wide monitors, so I can play this on my 49-inch ultra-wide as well as my 34-inch ultra-wide monitor without any visual distortions, and gives not only the general gameplay a more cinematic feel, but also the cutscenes and brings them to life in a way that normally wouldn't feel as spectacular as it does. So I give a hats off to Nixies for incorporating it so perfectly. Now all the gameplay footage that you're seeing has been captured utilizing the Avermedia Live Gamer Extreme 3. This is an amazing capture card, so if you're looking to capture any content for your Steam Deck, for your PlayStation, for your Xbox, or your Nintendo Switch, this is a capture card you want to get. So if you want to pick this up, link will be down in the description down below. Back to the review. If you played Spider-Man Remastered, then you'll feel right at home with this game because basically everything from that game is here in this expansion, with a lot of new things exclusive to Miles. Speaking of controls, you can play this game with any controller set up from mouse and keyboard, Xbox controller, Switch controller if you want to, and PlayStation 4 and 5 controllers. What's cool about using a PlayStation 5 controller is that it allows you to utilize the DualSense's haptics feedback and adaptive triggers, however you'll need to have a wired connection if you want to use features. Now this is also an area where a lot of people have been wanting to utilize DualSense's capabilities wirelessly and there hasn't been a dongle that allows you to do that or any way that you can 
you know, wirelessly get that to work on PC or Steam Deck. So that's something I guess down the road could be coming, but right now you're gonna have to use a wire connection if you wanna utilize those features. There's also the inclusion of the force feedback with the DualSense controller, which gives various feelings of tension when you're web slinging. And then there's various vibrations based on what's going on in the game. Again, that goes back to what I was talking about earlier with utilizing the DualSense controller with this PC port. When it comes to playing this on the Steam Deck, you can expect to get a good uh, two hours and a half of gameplay if you have it on default settings, which have the graphical settings set to medium and frame rate to 30 frames per second with AMD FSR 2.1 turned on. And you can adjust the graphical detail as well as the frame rate and push it all the way up to 60 frames per second. Although depending on what you have turned on, the game may have a fluctuating frame rate. So if you don't have the settings on medium, with higher refresh rates, then you're probably gonna wanna tinker with the TDP settings and per game profiles on your Steam Deck. Then you could possibly get a little over two and a half hours of gaming on the go. Now, do keep in mind the fans do kick in when playing this portably, but they never got so loud to the point where it was unbearable, nor overtook the speakers on the Steam Deck. Now, the Steam Deck does get warm when playing this portably, but it never got burning to the touch, so do keep that in mind. Beyond that, there isn't really a lot of massive changes between Spider-Man Remastered and Spider-Man Miles Morales, other than a new Spider-Man to play, as well as a few different abilities and gameplay functions, and an overall shorter adventure. If you previously played the game on PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5, then the core gameplay hasn't really changed that much. Graphically speaking, this game is gorgeous. Miles and crew all look superb and the lip syncing is on point. The characters are a perfect blend of realistic looking as well as video gamey looking, if that makes sense. Miles Morales is voiced and modeled after actor Naji Jeter, and there are times when I struggle to not think the in-game character isn't a real life version, as everything from subtle animations and movements are all there from the real life actor and it's just awesome. The city overall has never looked this beautiful in the game ever. Even when you compare it to like the PlayStation 5 version on PC, it's just a whole different beast as the vistas and the streets themselves just feel so much more alive and vibrant. The various people moving about the city and the conversations going on and the various podcasts you can listen to, as well as to immerse yourself in this world is just absolutely stunning. The level of detail in the buildings, streets, weather effects, and more are all superb. Insomniac's version of New York is lively of a recreation with all the real life landmarks you'd expect plus a couple of Marvel centric ones too. While in the PlayStation 5 and 4 version the street population wasn't as dense as you'd want it to be, I did find that playing this on PC it is substantially more dense. There's way more people around and I think it's just because you don't have the limitations on PC that you would on the PlayStation 4 and 5. But aside from all that I found myself spending more time swinging between buildings than on the ground and interacting with pedestrians. Now when it comes to the audio, this game has an amazing title theme with some hip hop flavor added to Spider-Man's theme to reflect that this is Miles' story and game and not Peter's. The voice acting in this game is right up there with being on the level of quality of a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie and that's to say that it's incredibly natural and lifelike and believable, as well as got that Marvel centric humor. The OST has a lot of remixes of what you heard in the previous game, along with a few new heavy hitters and some atmospheric ones too, based on the mood and the scenes that you're in. All in all, the audio is top-notch quality. Now when it comes to the downsides, I have to be honest in just saying that Miles' voice can be incredibly grating at times, as I know he's supposed to be a nerdy teenager, but man, it comes across as incredible you know, incredibly knowing and it's very try hard. Like it's like the voice actor is intentionally trying to sound annoying. And I really can't stand it. I'm also not a fan of Miles as a character. I do feel he has his good moments as a character, but it's just overall annoying. I don't resonate with this character. Now that's not to say he's entirely horrible, as he does come into his own as the story continues in the game and grows into a character that I did at points start to like. And I do look forward to seeing where this version of Miles is taken in Spider-Man 2. The other downside is the fact that while you fight the underground group, you ultimately are only fighting a handful of the same recycled enemies. I understand this was done to free up resources in the engine, but I'm 
honestly unimpressed by this. So in wrapping all this up, Spider-Man Miles Morales was a defining launch title for the PlayStation 5 from both a performance standpoint and visual fidelity standpoint, and now with it being on PC and Steam Deck, it's even better. From the gameplay to the graphics to the story to the world, an immense amount of care is apparent and greatly appreciated within this title. Spider-Man Remastered was one of the best gaming experiences that I had both in 2018 as well as again here in 2020 and the remastered version that came out on PlayStation 5 back in 2020. And being able to play Miles Morales on the Steam Deck just makes it that much more amazing. Spider-Man Miles Morales is a game that you should definitely add to your collection and is a must own if you own a Steam Deck. And that's it, that's the review for Spider-Man Miles Morales for PC as well as for Steam Deck. Again, thank you to PlayStation for providing me the opportunity to review this game. I am a PlayStation partner and I absolutely love the opportunity to be able to cover PlayStation titles. Now at this point I want to know what do you guys think of this game? Have you picked it up previously on PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5? Have you played this on on PC? Are you thinking about picking this up today? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want to pick up a copy of this game, I do have affiliate links down in the description below that way you can go and pick it up. And uh, all that being said, if you want to support the content that I do, make sure you like the video, sub to the channel if you haven't already, ding the notification bell. And if you want to take it a step further, we got channel memberships as well as Patreon and super thanks here on YouTube, as well as merch over on Teespring and TeePublic. All that being said, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Stay safe, be blessed, have aloha, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.